In May 1945, the Germans finally surrendered. The Americans, along with the Russians, were now the dominant powers. They were determined to put the surviving Nazi leaders on trial. The trial began on November the 20th, 1945. The prosecution's aim was to show that the Nazis in the dock had conspired to wage war and to commit crimes against humanity. You said that um, Alaki was demonstrably and provably involved in operations. Do you plan on demonstrating? I, I, you know, I should step back. I, he is clearly, I mean, provably maybe a legal term. I, I, I think it has been well established. I don't have anything for you on that. Do you not see at all, does the administration not see at all how a president asserting that he has the right to kill an American, kill an American, kill an American, kill an American, kill an American citizen without due process, and that he's not going to even explain why he thinks he has that right? You will see their own conduct and hear their own voices as these defendants reenact for you some of the events in the course of the conspiracy. What began in the courtroom at Nuremberg was the construction of the grand public memory of the Second World War. Out of the chaotic fragments of five years of warfare, the Allies forged a simple, powerful story. But the memories and experiences that didn't fit the story were quietly discarded and forgotten. I obviously thought he had weapons. He didn't have weapons. The world thought he had weapons. It was a, a surprise to me that he didn't have the weapons of mass destruction that everybody thought he had, but he had the capacity at some point in time. Throughout Germany, the past was being buried and forgotten by millions of men and women. I, I don't think we ever said, at least I know I didn't say, that there was a direct connection between September the 11th and, 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 and Saddam Hussein. Meanwhile, in the courtroom, the Allies, too, carried on reconstructing Germany's past. They lived in a strange world. Each day, they listened to the careful cataloguing of Nazi atrocities. While in the dock, Rudolf Hess read Grimm's fairy tales. But there was one German who was determined the past should not be wiped. He wanted to defend it publicly. Hermann Goering was about to be cross-examined by the chief American prosecutor, Robert Jackson. Jackson didn't reach Goering. Nobody could reach Goering. In other words, Goering, as a condottieri type, as I've mentioned, did not know the difference between good and bad and right and wrong. That didn't mean anything to him. Some people have uh, guessed what's in the report and have concluded that uh, going into Iraq was a mistake. I strongly disagree. I think it's naive. I think it's a mistake for people to believe that uh, going on the offense against people that want to do harm to the American people uh, makes us less safe. So to confront him with crimes that he had been responsible for, but that he felt he had to commit these acts because they were necessary to safeguard the life and the future of the body national. How are you? Was pointless. Again and again, Jackson accused Goering of corruptly using his power to commit crimes. Each time, Goering responded that such actions might be crimes in a democratic state, but that in Germany, democracy had failed. Eliminating the political opposition was necessary to fulfill a higher principle, that of the nation. And it had worked, Goering insisted. It had brought order and prosperity to Germany. the link between the political ideas that Goering was explaining to the court and the terrible crimes the Nazis had committed. The horrors revealed at the trial were so overwhelming that those who had committed them began to be seen as alien and utterly other. And so the trial became a morality play, a battle against evil, with Goering's role that of the villain. That's right, Wolf, and the Attorney General said today that he will not investigate because the Bush Justice Department determined that the waterboarding was permissible. But nobody really has paid much attention to what the Germans thought the war was fought for in their sometimes, how shall I call it, a very twisted mentality that was, that was spread by Hitler and his people. Good morning. The body national. 
developed a form of nationalism where the entire nation was considered one body that had to be assured of its security and life. In the name of this mentality, most of these crimes were committed. Woke up this morning.